come to the Eagle's Empyrean because I want to get rid of that poor report from Caduceus before I forget about it. Trade it in here, see if that can get me in the good graces of the con. And also, the Reach Transit Relay is here, so I want to go to the Reach. There's at least two things I can think of to do. Um, one, of the, one of the feline eccentrics cats can go there. Um, at oh, Actually, three things. At New Winchester, I can drop off the uh, Truth Ambition quest uh, person. I don't remember exactly what their name was, but I can drop one of them off, get the next person. Mm, I got a prospect for smuggling Starshine there. And Mr. Menagerie should also be at New Winchester. So, a lot to do. Deliver intelligence on Caduceus. A smile, a nod, an envelope passed from hand to hand under the table. A dropped mahjong tile draws your attention to a money pouch by your seat. You pick it up and play your next move. Careful as you are, it's unlikely that this exchange has gone unnoticed by observers from the London Embassy. The Eagle currently considers you an informant. So I can donate plaques from Dowser Engines. I finally have some of those. Three. I guess I'll do this to lower my terror? You have fought hard against those who would extinguish the light. They're kind of my people, but, you know, it happens. They just shoot me. I'm not turning off my damn lights. The official will appreciate that. Terror has fallen. The official passes you a hot cup of tea before sipping his own. He points to the bright moon and smiles proudly. It's almost all that stands between us and the night. That intimidates some. Not me. I find it reassuring. Human invention can conquer the wilderness and the dark that floods it. Human invention and the bravery of those who'd fight against the revolutionaries who would betray us. <laughs> yeah, those damn revolutionaries. <laughs> uh, start sweating. Substantial terror reduction just for one plaque. Look like about 10% each time. What is the con currently interested in? Wait. They want another port report from Caduceus? Okay. <laughs> Alright. Oh, I don't want to go to London's Enclave. Actually, I do for a port report. <clears throat> now let's go into the Empyrean. Outrider repairs for launch, joining the ceremonies to reduce our terror. Visa checkpoint. Check my visa. Where shall we go? Ovo return skies? I don't remember where these go, but I've done them all. Mm, pause for a procession. The Eagle Khan is passing through the streets of his city today. The street ahead is thronged with people. Laborers, station workers, traders, servants, courtiers, and courtesans line the way to the Blue Citadel. A coterie of lacquer armored guards keep the crowds at bay as the Khan's red and gold sedan makes its way down the way. Sedan? Does sedan mean something other than the car? It must. Uh, behind it, like the tail of a comet, are the liveried lesser members of the royal family. Their robes trail along the white stone. Their crowns sparkle in the red electric light. They toss coins as they pass. You take a handful. Free money is free money, after all. Ah, now I can spend an evening in the Ovo, now that I'm considered an agent. Okay. Favored citizens and friends of the Empyrean are welcome to stay in the Ovo after hours, when the visitors and celebrants have gone home. Beneath the boughs where the lanterns hang. As visitors are ushered out, a sharp-eyed guard stops you. If you wish to stay a while, you're welcome, he says. Some believe that spending a night here brings luck. 
other stages because they find the place restorative. You join a group of Empyrean citizens beneath the boughs of a silver tree. Many resting there are highly placed in the court, but there are a few merchants, palace servants, and dock workers among them. You while away the night swapping stories of histories back in the world you've all left behind. In the morning, a troop of very polite guards escorts you out of the Empyrean to the port. Terra's fallen and two visions of the heavens. That's pretty good. So they're still not going to let me in, even though I'm an agent, right? No. What if I what if I get like, you know, considered something higher than an agent? Is that possible? I'm I'm hoping there's some other benefits than just this. Otherwise, like, what's the point of really working with them anymore? You know, like getting more poor reports for them. All the way back at New Winchester now. I actually got all the way down to 700 sovereigns. But uh, a lot of my money is tied up in assets. So I'm going to sell everything down till I have 20 of it. And just doing that is going to give me 6,300. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing fine on money. And... and <laughs> so she, oh my god. I'm watching my cats. Gaby's tail is like flopping all around right in front of Transbian. And Transbian's playing with it and it's pissing off Gaby. <laughs> Okay, I broke up the drama. Hmm, let's go speak with Mr. Menagerie. Hear their story? Mr. Menagerie stares around him at the smog and industry of New Winchester, the teeming throngs that crowd the station. For a moment, it seems subdued. Awestruck, perhaps? Then it shakes its shoulders and adjusts its cape. We left the kingdom of ways and measures behind. We sought something new, but became lost in the sunless sky. Then you arrived, with your delicious novelties, your items ripe for collection. Mr. Menagerie gestures to its few remaining cages. We have given away everything we gathered then, but we'll stay here a while yet. We have new appetites to satisfy. Mr. Menagerie's stall is permanently at New Winchester. Awesome. So kind of full circle. Like, is... I don't remember if Mr. Menagerie actually started at New Winchester, but certainly in the reach. So it feels like full circle. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the seal of Mr. Barleycorn. Mr. Menagerie hisses sharply. Its garnet eyes glow like a cornered cat's. Its cloak rises up, as if something vast is unfolding beneath it. Then, abruptly, it rocks back on its heels, returns to its usual shape and size. Very well. You have listened to our stories, bargained for our collection, relieved our burden. Tell the chained one. Tell the chained one we still wait in the dark. When it has the courage to break its chain, we will be here. The chained one, Mr. Barleycorn, is it because they're still choosing to serve their master? They're still chained. Oh, and I checked what I had in my bank, by the way. I actually have two dividend bats and one intrepid cavy. So I don't have a star smitten bat. It's very cheap. Two visions of the heavens, two savage secrets. Let's get it. Mr. Menagerie runs its gloved hand along its shoulder, attempting to encourage the bat to climb on. Eventually, Mr. Menagerie is forced to perform an undignified shimmy to roll the bat onto its hand. <laughs> As the bat is passed to you, it looks into your face and squeaks. Oh! Its pupils shine like cut tourmaline. You're forced to break your gaze after a moment or two. Its eyes are uncomfortably bright. It loves the stars. Now I've got every possible scout. Let's go back to our ambition. Part ways with a masked citizen. They kept to their cabin on the return journey. The crew reported seeing starlight seeping from under their door at all hours. Hmm. 
The jars accumulating outside their cabin painted a melancholy picture. The citizen had been steeping themselves in lamp after lamp of starshine. Perhaps the familiar captive starlight reminded them of times before you learned the hypocrisy of suns, before you both grew the second mouths hidden beneath your clothes. The citizen climbs, blinking from your engine. Our quest has led us down roads that are hostile to my disposition. Having learned of the forces at play, I have little hope of seeing our friend again. I don't know about you, but I intend to begin drinking heavily. Good luck in all your endeavors. Good luck, buddy. Please don't drink heavily. That just leaves Spatchcocker Meg. Mm, where we need to go? Uh, you ready? We'd better take your engine. Mine ain't presentable for entertaining. Remember, we'll need four caged catches to convince the old devil to talk to us. What old devil? What, where are we going? Meg whistles as she walks onto your locomotive. Very nice, very nice. Classy. She ensconces herself in a cabin. Mr. Menagerie moves about a lot. Old Abbott, I suppose. He leaves a note so you can find him. She pulls a dog-eared cart from her inner pocket. It reads, We return to the smoggy, clanking, singing, stamping, thronging, frantic stoop out of humanity, the blister of glass and steel in the heart of the garden. I don't think the fire what follows is the master. I think it's the servant or the hound. Maybe Menagerie can shed some light. Oh. Well, it's a good thing that they happen to be right here. You'll need four cage catches to secure his aid. Let's grab it. Ask Mr. Menagerie about the fire that follows. Mr. Menagerie is not pleased to see Meg. The spatchcocker, it hisses. There is an impasse. <laughs> Only when you wheel your stack of caged catches forward does Mr. Menagerie consent to answer your questions. The fire that follows. Dangerous knowledge for us. More so for you. The fire is a hunting flame. It comes for those who know a thing they should not. It draws back out of the starlight. A secret sworn between suns. The knowledge itself is the scent it follows. And when it has you, the courtesy will come. Ask Mr. Menagerie if it knows this secret of the suns. And if it does, why hasn't the fire come? Once I did, Menagerie pulls its hood to one side, revealing a bat-like muzzle, mottled fur, and a livid burn mark across one side of its skull. Burned it out. Better my fire than theirs. The hood falls forward. The flame has your scent, Menagerie asks. No, Meg says. A friend's. She's missing. Ah, then look for her at the House of Jude in London. I know its master. I collect my pets. He collects his. House of Jude? Well, that's an Albion. At Lustrum now. I was just looking through all the things that I need to do in the Reach, and it turns out, after doing the stuff in New Winchester, and then now turning in the smuggling prospect at Lustrum, there's actually nothing to do in the Reach. The thing I was thinking about with uh, cats from the feline eccentric, turns out that is the bad option. I think it's at uh, Magdalene's. We can drive one of them off. Or you can take them to the White Well if I want to do the positive option, which I do. But I do have a lot of things to do in Albion. So after Lustrum, I'm going to go to Albion. Uh, just did all the things at Lustrum, the standard stuff, port reports, etc., etc., but... Let's do the starshine. 1700 profit. Reputation with a smuggler 7, a moon mizzler. 
And a bonus. Vision of the heavens. And a bark and a bronzewood. Okay. I'll see you in Albion. In Albion now. It's been a while since we've been here, too. Yeah, there's a lot to do. Uh, but I guess before I go back to London, let's go to Brabazon Workworld, because it's just right there. I guess I won't cut this out either, because this feels kind of fresh to me, you know? <laughs> like, I want to start... Uh, I want to get back into the feeling of Albion. Takes me a little bit. As far as I know, the only thing we need to do at Brabazon Workworld is recruit psalmists. What is this? The last day. A horn blares. The factory doors creak open. Those workworlders lucky enough to have reached the end of their service blink in the light of freedom. They were young when they first arrived. Now their skin is calloused and wrinkled, aged not only by hard labor but the slow burning light of the clockwork sun. Help a workworlder with their paperwork. Heck yeah. Only 61% chance of success though. They're due to be released, but Brabazon never makes it easy. Yes! The Overseer is most displeased when you turn up with one of her workers, forms all correctly filed out and stamped. They're forced to release the prisoner on schedule. Your only reward is a smile from the prisoner and a scowl from the Overseer. It is enough. It certainly is. Ask what has happened. Children are no longer trekking between their school and Little Nice and Brabazon. The overseers look tired and wary. It's the workers, you see. We just can't keep them happy. The overseer sighs heavily. We can't change anything. We can't keep them happy. We can't do anything right. Just making themselves miserable and life harder for us. We don't want to make them work, but if they don't, he shakes his head. I fucking hate this place. It's possible to lower unrest in the back streets of Bravazon. I don't think I want to do that. Recruit some desperate workers to join the Psalmists. The White Well offers freedom, though also admittedly frostbite. You'll need to call in a favor to get the workers released. Arrangements are made. Favors are called in. A band of workers in smoke-stained smocks are brought out to meet you. They assure you they'll convert to whatever you like, so long as they can leave here. That is so sad. You talk to them about the doctrine of the Judas Psalm. Can they think of anyone who has wronged them? Anyone they want to curse in the name of God? Their eyes light up. Do you want a list right now? Asks a haggard woman at the front. Or can I have a few days to write up something comprehensive? That's the spirit. Oh, it took a cryptic benefactor to do that. That's the calling in a favor thing. I think that's all the people I can possibly recruit for the Psalmists. Travel a little nice. I don't remember what I can do here. Converse with a governor. What did that do? Two salon stewed gossip. For a caddy of dried tea. Meh. Climb on a bench to lower terror a little. I think it was already at zero. Get a port report. Oh wait, is this the place where you can't do it? You cannot get a report on browsing work world from Little Nice. Hmm. Let's take the official shortcut to the back street. Let's use the hours. Here we can get a real port report. 
speak to the workers and reduce their disgruntlement. I don't want to do that. Like, again, they should be unhappy with their lot. Give books to a school? The workers strike and suffer for it. They're undeterred. Change must come. So does that mean they're getting more pissed off when I do these things? I don't remember how this worked. It's just, it just seems like it's pretty much the same cycle starting again. But I gained a vision of the heavens. That's something. Provide fuel for warmth. Tell sky stories to weary workers. I don't know if it's changing. It keeps saying the same thing. The workers are unhappy with their lot. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be changing it. Explore the true Brabazon? Gain terror? I don't think I can do anything here at all, can I? Other than reduce their disgruntlement, I don't think I can increase it. I remember I did that before to make them pissed off enough to actually take action. And that's how we got here. Oh wait, 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 wait. I think that did something. The Brabazon workers are up in arms. So it is making them more pissed off. Speak to the workers and reduce their... Oh wait, um... You need between 10 and 99 unrest. You have 100. Okay. Good, I think. I don't know, what do I what do I do now? Before there was like a leader trying to <clears throat> trying to lead them all in for the revolution, but now there doesn't seem to be one. Provide fuel for warmth? Yeah, the unrest cannot increase past a hundred. I'm running out of time. Explore the true Brabazon again. Does anything change? No, I need to leave. Something is wrong. Okay. They're shouting coming from Brabazon work world. It must be tremendous for you to hear it from here. A post unrest uprising. A crowd flows up the tunnel. Overseers are pressed to the walls. Deliberately or accidentally, the result is the same. Howls of pain. The crowd doesn't turn against its own. But workers are hurt nonetheless. This uncontrolled scrum is a danger to all. Hmm. Hold back the workers, reason with them, or let the workers board the locomotive nearest them. Hmm. Overseers have had enough time to form a barricade in the tunnel. Only one locomotive is unguarded. A wreck of a thing, barely more than salvage. I'd love to get some people off of here, but I'd be worried that that wreck is just going to fall apart and they're all going to die. Hold back the workers, reason with them. The only locomotive available is in dangerously poor condition. It does not look fit to brave the skies. Their lives may be passing swiftly here, but at least they're alive. Hmm. Hmm. This is a hard decision for me, actually. <sighs> Hold back the workers, reason with them. <sighs> the workers halt. Several look uncertain. Most seem to trust your judgment as a captain. Three men dismiss your words and shove their way aboard the engine. The locomotive had only two crew in addition to its captain. All three are thrown out onto the dock. The door is slammed and the engine jerks free into the wilderness. Speak with the governor. He rushed from Little Nice the moment he heard of the disruption. Damn and blast it! He follows this with profanities rarely heard in Albion and never in polite circles. He has a few quiet words with the captain of the stolen ship before turning to you. We were due to break it for scrap. I doubt they'll even get halfway to another port. It'll be the cold or the hunger, but one will get them. He looks genuinely devastated. I'm doing the best I can, but I can't convince him that this is better than the alternative. 
no matter the truth. He smiles wryly. This will do more to quiet them than anything I could have. It's a useful sacrifice, at least. Brabazon is at peace. Workers respect their lot in life. Oh my god, this is the most depressing place. And then it's back in the loop again. I can't do anything here. I need to just go. Wait, what is this? Attempt to converse with an overseer? Gained a couple sky stories. I think this is also starting over again as well. Listen to the work of the committee for the improvement of working conditions. I think we did this a long time ago. A couple minutes of stamp permits. I don't think that really did anything. Wave of the children on the way to school. Yeah, this is all just the same loop. But I might as well do this stuff to get the stories and things. Okay. Let's buy up all the tea and get out of this incredibly depressing place. I tried. I did all I could. Let's head back to London. At London. And I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to do all the things that we need to do in Albion. <laughs>